a lot of seasons to talk about. I mean, even if you don't know much about them. <laughs> and I want to know how much it's worth. Welcome to this week's Legislative Update. I'm Jim Baumgart, your host. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, um, all of a sudden, I was on and I didn't realize that. It's always good to be surprised. But I think we have a, a nice surprise for the viewers today because we have Dan, um, and I get this right, uh, um, Lakey? Very good. Right. Uh, and Dan is the uh, supervisor for the uh, DNR's wildlife program. Uh, covering about five, six, seven counties, is it? Yep, seven counties in the northeast called okay. the Lake Michigan District. And you're stationed in Plymouth. Absolutely. Yeah, at the well, service glad to have there. you because Dan uh, is uh, fairly new and he's going to give his background in a moment. Um, but he's not new. I mean, he's been around for a while, but new to Wisconsin for the last year and a quarter, year and a, a little bit. Uh, and uh, I've had the opportunity to meet him as he's come to the Chewing County Conservation Association meetings, which meet, the, all the clubs have delegates, they meet once a month. Dan shows up, answers questions, and uh, does a little uh, um, newsletter for all the uh, delegates to be able to look at and uh, uh, have uh, those things go to their clubs. So thank you for being in Wisconsin. Why don't you uh, provide the viewers with a little history of uh, uh, your travels? Jim, I appreciate it. These Thank are you. not colorful. <laughs> These are Dan's DNR travel. They could be similar, but I appreciate the opportunity to visit with the folks here and get my face out in front of them. Uh, like I said, I've been here a little over a, a year. Uh, I graduated from UW Stevens Point back my, in my alma mater, by the way. Very nice. Yeah. Graduated in 1986 and then accepted a job offer with Kansas Department of Wildlife and Parks right after that. And so the game plan was to move down there with my wife and spend a year or two and then come back up to Wisconsin and work for the DNR. But 30 years later, I finally got here. A bunch of moves in between. But with Wildlife and Parks, I was a wildlife biologist and did a bunch of the same things that go on here, you know, trap and band, waterfowl. We did a turkey reintroduction back 30 years ago, a very successful program. Had an opportunity to move on and work for the Extension Service there and uh, was the natural resources agent and also the director for the last 11 years, which really, uh, you know, fate has its way. You know, that's what got me to come up here is my administrative background. Yeah. And so um, 30 years later, here I am, and, and really looking forward to getting to know the area better and looking forward to this upcoming season. Well, and, and, and we're going to talk about uh, uh, the season shortly, and we appreciate the fact that uh, uh, you're here because you've got all of those experiences and. Um, those are hard to come by, and uh, you know when people talk about, yeah, I'd like to work for DNR, a warden, or wildlife, um, fisheries, um, you know, and I put a you know a dozen years in uh, that um, wonderful experience. But sometimes you're you're waist down in, in muck in a marsh with waders on and the wind's blowing and it's snowing, out <laughs> and you wonder what you're doing, <laughs> or. You, or you're sitting in a in a, in a uh, fishing research boat uh, 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 doing uh, a chub research, and the boat is bobbing around like a cork in the water, and you wonder if you'll get out alive and uh, loving it uh, after it's all over. <laughs> Absolutely, it sounds like we had many of the same experiences, oh, sure. but it's not easy, and and uh, uh, and it can be very rewarding, and uh, I'm sure that you've had many a day like that. Um, why don't we talk about some of the seasons because we're um, quickly going through through the minutes, and we shouldn't be talking to, to each other. We should be talking to the viewers. Um, we've we've got a whole bunch of things. Uh, uh, pheasant season uh, uh, is on, and, and I understand uh, um, there aren't as many native ones that get hatched. And uh, the conservation association plants a bunch of pheasants, a couple of thousand, I think. DNR plants some. Where where do you hide these things? Yeah, absolutely. It's a great question. Uh, pheasant season uh, just opened this past weekend, and uh, well, this will be a few weeks from now when this show. <laughs> Good point. So pheasant season basically, we go out and we stock uh, several areas twice a week, 
And in the Sheboygan County, we, we hit uh, Adele, the Sheboygan Marsh, Nichols Creek, and the uh, Kettle Moraine, the northern unit. We, we stock birds there twice a week. And uh, it's a very successful program. We have a lot of hunters that are always trying to find out when we're releasing them, but we, we try to keep that a little bit of a secret. But it's a very successful Get program. Get them drive out there and plant them. <laughs> you know, there are spies out there that they know what's going on. So, so that's that, great, and, and uh, provides some, some uh, recreation uh, for a lot of people and, and some food for the table. And uh, you just have to be a little careful when you chew down on a, a pheasant leg, that's all. There might be a BB in there. Um, what about the... Uh, uh, other ones, we've had uh, uh, squirrel seasons on for a long time. Uh, we've got rabbit season opened up with the uh, uh, pheasants. That's a very uh, productive one for people that uh, run dogs. Yeah, it's one of my favorite styles of hunting where I grew up in Medford, Wisconsin. We had a bunch of beagles and we'd go after snowshoe hares. And around here, I know it's cottontails, but I know that there's a lot of people that really enjoy doing it. And if you like dogs, it's a, it's a great sport to get into. Well, and, and snowshoe hares, we used to hunt up in, in, in Florence County. And before, uh, you know, the, the snowshoe hare population dropped uh, uh, when they was up uh, early in the season, these things are almost twice the weight of the cottontail. You get a couple of those, you put some real meat on the table. And they're very good. Oh, they are. And they're excellent eating. Early in the season, if after they've lost a few pounds by late <laughs> January, they, they aren't quite as good, of course. But uh, but it's still good exercise getting out there and snowshoeing them or walking through some of those swamps. And, you know, they, they change color. Absolutely. Yeah, they from, go from their, their uh, rabbit color to all white, and they're sometimes pretty hard to see. Absolutely. Uh, we have, uh, uh, for hunters, uh, red and gray fox that continues, and um, on the southern end of uh, the state, we've got a rough grouse season that opened up with the, uh, um, with the pheasant season, and that goes until uh, December 31st. Yes. But there aren't a lot of... Not a lot of birds around here, at least as far as, you know, as long as I've been here, haven't heard a lot of activity there. We had a meeting up in Hayward last week, and they were getting after them. There were a bunch of birds up there. So it's one of those things you may have to travel a little bit, but uh, when you get into them, they're very enjoyable. Great well, tasting bird and, also. And interesting enough, I read in the, in the paper, uh, uh, Paul Smith's uh, article from the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel, the early reports on drummings, you know, the, uh, that's how they tell how many grouse if the numbers are up or, or down, were up this spring, but the uh, harvest is now down. So they're not sure why. Uh, could be the weather maybe throughout the year? Could be part of that. Part of it could be the ability to shoot with all the leaves on yet. <laughs> that makes it a little more difficult. The leaves haven't come down yet and, and you've yeah, got to see them. I, I was always so. good at shooting some leaves down, but not always good at getting... What about deer season? They, uh, this is, of course, a big one. And uh, we talked uh, in last week's program about chronic waste disease. Mm -hmm. And maybe before we get into the deer season, um, you want to just maybe mention a little bit about the chance to um, have your deer check for chronic waste disease free uh, at the uh, Plymouth Station if they call. Yeah, I appreciate that. really want folks to understand what's going on there. Uh, Sheboygan and Fond du Lac counties have been selected for a weighted sampling, it's called. And Manorock and Calumet. They have. Right, right. Yeah, th th there's five counties clumped right. together, but in my district, it's those two. But oh. the, the game plan is to go ahead and try to stay ahead of the curve and we're going to check adult bucks to make sure that uh, we don't have that CWD within our population in Sheboygan and Fond du Lac counties. Uh, adult bucks are the ones that would have the most opportunity to contract the disease and carry it. And they seem more susceptible than the does for whatever reason. Yeah, they move around a lot more. They have the ability to come in contact with it. So that's one of the reasons we go after those adult bucks. Yeah, and uh, uh, it's going to be a three-year program. And at the end of three year. Uh, because they're going to do a lot of testing if everybody brings in their deer. We should have a good idea if there is any chronic waste disease in this lakeshore area. We're really looking at uh, between Fond du Lac and Sheboygan County. We need 200 deer to get a, to get oh, a good right. sample. There's your chance. Make sure your deer, deer is uh, CWD free. Just uh, call at a time and we'll, we'll put that number up. We have uh, the deer gun season November 18th to November 26th. Um, that's nine days. Yes that if you go out there and the weather is nice, uh, 
a little cover of snow and uh, mild temperatures, you can have a great time. But then, <laughs> I hammered last year for the first time in 30 years in Wisconsin. Did you? Right here in uh, in Sheboygan County, and the wind was blowing about 50 miles an hour for that <laughs> opening weekend. So that, it reminded me about what Wisconsin deer hunting was. Yeah, it can it can wake you up a little bit, <laughs> and, but it's a great uh, time of the year where where families and friends get together and. Uh, um, Fantastic yeah. tradition. It's just great. Uh, we do have a mother loader season that goes after that um, from November 27th to December 6th. Is there anything that you have to qualify to be able to hunt um, with a mother loader? Do you have to, if you harvest a deer, you can't hunt or not sure? It's, it's one of those things, uh, if I'm following the, the question correctly. I'm not sure if I'm <laughs> asking the question. That's correctly. fine. There's, there's an actual muzzle loader season where you have a permit. Okay. And you can go ahead and, and use it just like you would as a, during the rifle check, season. Check the, the rules. That's yep. Get in the regulations. Our website has everything listed out there. It's, it's pretty easy to find. Just type in the search box, uh, muzzle loader regs. Muzzle loader regs. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, we have, of course, uh, the archery season, which now uh, in the last couple of years have been uh, at the same time the crossbow season. And um, my understanding is you buy a license for one or the other, or you can buy one for both. Is that? You can buy one. My understanding is, you know, it's like if you buy the regular archery one, it's a $3 fee to increase it to a um, crossbow. Crossbow. Okay. And then uh, you have to use it in one or the other. All right. You can't have one crossbow and one. No. <laughs> you have to choose which one you're going to use. These crossbows are, are heavy. You don't lug them around uh, without <laughs> some effort. Uh, deer tags, uh, they're sort of um, not new because the legislature at the last minute in the budget uh, said you don't need tags. New situation surprise. that uh, people need to be aware of. We've already, before that budget bill passed, Printed off about a, a thousand uh, carcass tags for both deer, or turkey, and and for the so a lot of people had them. They already have them, which is no problem. The information that's printed on there is what you need to register your deer. You still need to register your deer by 5 p.m. the day after you harvest it. So what I suggest is use that if you already have it or have printed one off. Use that as a coupon. Just carry it with you. You harvest your deer. Go ahead and on your iPhone or get on the computer or call on the telephone register the deer once you're done with it throw the coupon away yeah assuming that you're in an area that uh, has connection with the tower <laughs> <laughs> it's a good point well we, we have, have to 5 p.m the next day so you well, don't have yeah, to drive we, around we, in, in florence county we had, sometimes had to stand up on the picnic table <laughs> to use if that didn't work we could drive up to the uh, hill next to the uh, cabin and, and connect but it wasn't from the cabin that we <laughs> do that um so but we always registered. Anyway, we are running out of time, Dan. Um, make sure that uh, if they have any questions, they can call you at the Plymouth office. Do you have a number there? Yeah, they can call the office there. We actually have uh, support staff there from 11 till 2. And the number there is 920-892-8756. And people can also call to set up appointments so they can have their deer checked for CWD. That is correct, and that's a different number. It's going to go straight to one of our wildlife guys. Okay, what and number is that? 920-893-8541. We'll try to put that on the screen so that uh, you can mark it down and uh, give it to your um, husband or wife, whoever is hunting uh, the white-tailed deer. We thank you for coming. We thank Dan for showing up and providing the service that he's doing. Until next week, this has been Legislative Update.